But yeah, this wow. is a two and nine sixteenths combination wrench. Comes in very handy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So Leute, wir gehen jetzt mal in einen amerikanischen Werkzeugladen hier in Houston. Der Duck hat mir nämlich Kontakt vermittelt zum James und James und seine Familie haben seit, ich glaube, über 40 Jahren dieses Werkzeuggeschäft Emperor Tools. Und da gibt es eine Menge zu sehen. Gucken wir uns jetzt mal an. So, offensichtlich gibt es hier auch eine Hall of Fame. Ich glaube, die Kollegen haben hier so ein paar Sachen gemacht und sind hier nicht mehr so gern gesehen. Aber... Gute Laune am Start. Er ist auch Band for Life. Er war wahrscheinlich ein erfolgreicher Geschäftsmann. Ich will da hier mal einen äh, Knarrenkasten mitgeben, was nicht. Aber darum geht es jetzt nicht. Wir wollen jetzt mal ein bisschen äh, uns umgucken. Vielleicht kaufen wir mal was. So, jetzt bin ich hier äh, im Store. Es sieht schon mal ein bisschen anders aus als vielleicht von einem äh, gewöhnlichen deutschen Baumarkt. So, es ist aber kein gewöhnlicher Baumarkt, weil hier geht es wirklich nur um Werkzeuge. Und die haben sogar äh, ein paar deutsche Werkzeuge, habe ich mir sagen lassen. Ich guck mal, ich habe nämlich ein äh, Date mit dem James. Hier ist James. Ja. Hi James, how are you? Doing, doing well. I'm Andre. Hello. So, so, is it that y'all do? Hi, high school. Ja. Second language is German. I don't know how, to, how much he speaks. Yeah. Ambition. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, my brother took Spanish. I, I should have taken Spanish, but I, I couldn't roll my R's. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I'll take German instead. So I actually have been, I've been to Germany twice. Yeah. Where? Uh, most of the time we spent in Munich, yeah. but also been to Berlin. I've been to, uh, we went to, we went to uh, Salzburg in Austria. We went to so many yeah. cities. It was a and you place. like it? I love Munich. Yeah. Munich, you know, and, and Bayern was, you know, I get people say it's like the Texas of Germany, you know, but but I loved I loved Munich. If I would ever go back, that's where I'd go. I've I've never been to such a tool store in the US because like I know like a Home Depot or like yeah. a Lowe's, but those are like construction DIY everything. Yeah. Wood. Yeah. So yeah, we're a professional grade, you know, tool store in terms of pro contractor not a lot of home users you know like weekend warriors but we we do a lot of specialty stuff but yeah my parents started the business in 1977 at a little flea market they had a one little table and they wow. sold little hand tools and stuff on the weekends you know doing business for 44 years now uh we do both sales and service so everything that we sell here in terms of power tools we also fix here so you have so, a own workshop just for fixing mm, power tools yeah in the very back yeah so okay. we we work on you know dewalt bosch makita milwaukee we work on air tools we also work on gas powered equipment generators pressure washers we do all authorized work for the manufacturers we also do repair work for brands that we don't sell, like Home Depot brands, like Rigid, Ryobi. We fix all those tools, so. So um, you're, you're not selling Ryobi, but you service mm -hmm. it? But we service it. Okay. Because yeah, Ryo Rigid and Ryobi is this kind of a house brand for Home Depot, but we are the largest service center for them here in the Houston area. Wow. But we also, we, so we specialize in a lot of different industries. Uh, you know, our bread and butter is the diamond product stuff. These are, you know, Coring bits used to make faucet holes into like countertops, uh, diamond blades to cut through uh, marble and granite. These are diamond blades going from four inch up to 14 inch for cutting concrete. But we actually carry our <laughs> diamond blades that go up to 18 inch diamond blades. So when we have walk behind saws to cut concrete. This is one of our big specialties. The diamond product industry, there's a lot of people that claim to be manufacturers, but they're not. There's only a handful of manufacturers around the world. I know. And so we lucked out. We've been selling diamond products since the 90s. And a lot of the diamond products at the time were either being produced in Japan at a real high cost, and Korea was coming in as a high quality, low cost competitor. And my family's from Korea. Okay. So We did our due diligence and everyone says, yeah, I'm the manufacturer, I'm the manufacturer. But you look at packaging, you start, you go, hey, this packaging is similar to that packaging. Yeah. This label is similar to that type of labeling. And my dad actually flew to Korea and found a manufacturer, you know, showed a picture of our business and said, hey, I'm buying through these importers and exporters, you know, paying huge markups. You know, we want to buy a lot of stuff direct. And so since the late 90s, we've been buying everything manufactured direct in terms of Directly diamond Directly from the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So all my diamond product is not labeled because people trust my name in terms of the Houston market to say, if I sell you this blade for this application, you know it's going to be good, you know? I mean, you, you should be interested in returning customers, right? Yes. So if you sell junk. Exactly. And so, and that's one of the things is that you have to let customers know is whenever people buy product, 
that have like nice packaging or they're silk screened with labeling and stuff like that, those aren't the manufacturers. They're buying blank things, sure. marking it up. And so my price point can be below my competitors with a better quality product. Because I just ship them in and I don't even bother, I don't package it, I don't have to label it. And probably with a better margin for you. Exactly. So win-win for everyone. Exactly. And so, yeah, I, I regularly have customers that come in and they'll say they're buying a 20-inch diamond blade for concrete cutting, you know, $500, $600, $700. Mine's $300. And they're kind of apprehensive at first because they're like, well, that's such a big price difference, but they don't realize they're just paying the middleman all the way up. So they can get a better quality diamond blade at half the cost. Okay. Another thing is we do a lot of concrete work, you know, for tilt wall construction. Like this building is a tilt wall construction where they pour the concrete and they, they tilt it up. And so this whole building is made poured, poured out of concrete. And so a lot of our customers base is in terms of waterproofing. People would need to drill holes through concrete. Like, oh, I'll show you right over here. So in addition to what we have on the floor, there's a lot of stuff behind the counter that customers don't really know to ask, no, may not know what we have, but we sell quite regularly to, <laughs> this, is a different, this is a special one. So this one is a 12 inch wow. corn bit. So let's say you need to build a fence or something. Yeah, so this and, is diamond plated yeah. here, all right? So they take a cylinder core and they laser weld diamonds all the way around to actually go through concrete. So if you say you have a building, you want to protect it with, you know, put pillars in so that they can't ram it. You would drill giant holes, fill it with concrete, put a big pylon in there, and that's what you do. It says you're a Bosch, Bosch system specialist. So <laughs> uh, what are the tool brands that you carry, like for electric tools? I saw Metabo. So in terms of electric tools, uh, we carry Bosch, Makita, DeWalt, Milwaukee, uh, Metabo. Uh, in terms of- Porter Cable. Yeah, Porter Cable, uh, Delta. Powermatic, Jet. Uh, we carry a lot of brands. The Delta, I might have said Delta already. Um, nail gun, air tool wise, we carry like Senko, Hitachi, which is now Metabo, uh, JIT. Um, how, how would you rate the, the tool brands like? Well, see, that's the problem is people always want to say who's the best across the line but everyone does really well in, in different aspects of the product lines. Every co company you can think of makes a router, Some, yeah. but you want the best router in the world, it's Porter Cable. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Is but, it? The, but the problem is, is Stanley owns DeWalt, Black & Decker, uh, Porter Cable, and recently they <laughs> discontinued a lot of the Porter Cable routers, and they're switching them over to the DeWalt line. But, but yeah, like in terms of market size right now, Stanley, which owns DeWalt, Black & Decker, they're really battling right now against TTI, who own Rigid, Ryobi, and Milwaukee. And then the new player coming on is a company called Shervon, another Taiwanese company. They now own Skill, Flex, um, and some other Ego, and a few other brands. And so a lot of the tools are, a lot of these companies are consolidating and, and buying other small companies. Like TTI, which owns Milwaukee, bought Empire Level not too long ago. So now Stanley, I think, is going out and trying to buy their own level company. And so it's, the market's really changing. And it's these turning to these large multi-country multi conglomerates. But like, if you're talking about in terms of what Bosch does really well, they do really well in terms of their rotary hammers, demolition work. Anything with concrete stuff, they're high quality. Yeah, those are um, made in Germany actually, huh? Yeah. yeah, and a lot of their carbide is either made in Germany or I think Switzerland uh -huh. also. It's a lot of their tooling. But they're going through a little bit of a change also because Bosch owns Freud, which is the, uh, the Diablo line. And so they're, if you look at our display, I'll show you. Uh -huh. they, Right over here. Bosch for us is at the top of the line. They're yeah. very good quality. Milwaukee, uh, Makita is a very close second. But if you look at my car by tooling, you'll see these Diablo blades have just come out in the market. Yeah. The, the thing is, is they're both from the same company, yeah. Bosch. Yeah. But they're testing to see how these bits will sell under the Diablo name compared to the Bosch name. They, why is that? Why, why, they are why competing they? against themselves. And, and for, we always hear about German ingenuity. This is something that I don't quite understand what's going on right now. I want to say that they're actually using two different factories side by side. And they're sourcing one line for Diablo, they're sourcing one line for Bosch, and 
they basically are competing against themselves to see what's going to be the better product line. And I believe they're eventually going to phase one of the two lines out. But this is all brand new. So this is all stuff that's starting to come into stock. And we're going to see how they move. But this is literally all within the last few weeks. You know, we're kind of not sure about what's going on with it. But hey, you know, we'll see what sells and we report to them and let them know. Does it play a role that Bosch is a German brand? Is that is it German a, a, a it's not sign that of it's quality? A, it's, or? Oh, well, in America, do you know the original branding of Made in Germany, where it comes from? Yeah, was, because was it was... UK, in the UK, they It was a bad quality, so yes. to warn yeah. not to buy from Germany. Exactly. Most people don't realize that. But over the years, that's really... Ch the, the image has changed in terms of engineering or design or, or you know stuff like that. But definitely, when it comes to German-made products, it's viewed at a higher level than... American made or or Chinese made, you know, Is there's it? always a better uh, view of it. But specifically, Bosch, when it comes to demolition work, it's synonymous. You know, it's one and the same. People know, like, oh, like this jackhammer right here, this yellow yeah. one. It says brute. Brute. Ha, this, brute turbo. Yeah, oh, that's kind of this cool. This brute, this yellow. 60 pound jackhammer. This is a newer version of it, but this has been standard on the market for 20 years. Like this is when people talk about breaking concrete, this is a tool that people think about. So Bosch, Bosch's name has come synonymous with, you know, concrete work. And then when it comes to their tooling, they're actually very, very good. They hold up, um, they come at a good price point and they're very serviceable. So the difference between like a Home Depot or a smaller company that just do sales. They're only worried about make that initial sale, maybe some accessories. Fire and forget. And, and that's it. But for us, these are customers that come back to us. And if I ever sell a product and then something goes wrong with it, I want them to come back to me. I don't want them to have to go to someone else and get a lesser level of service on something that I sold them. So if I sell them a Bosch hammer and something goes bad, I want them to come back to me so I could make it right, whether I repair it or whether I exchange it or whatever I can do. It's not only about the price of the tool, but how long it will last and then how much are parts relative to the cost of a new unit to make it serviceable moving forward. Actually, total cost of ownership. Exactly. TCO. Exactly. Yeah. So these tools have a very good rate of return in terms of your initial investment because these, these tools can be out on a job site for 10, 15 years and with minor uh, upkeep or, you know, repair costs. You know, certain tools that we're moving to nowadays uh, brushless tools. A lot of small cordless tools are going yeah. brushless. Uh, by the way, cordless. Like I see this, this bi turbo. Yes, I think they are pretty good. Is it? Uh, what What is your opinion? So now that we've moved into the age of lithium ion technology, yeah. it's really opened the roof in terms of what we can do. Rotary hammers, uh, full size seven and a quarter circular saws. It used to be with old NICAD technology. You, a drill. Yeah, that's or, a different world. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do grinders. You're not going to do circular saws. You're not going to do hammers. I even have a corn drill that's cordless. You know, that's you know that can you drill concrete with. But this market has opened up with what the size of the batteries and then the power that it can push. So concrete work has become real popular, but more so, I don't know what the regulations are in Germany, but they recently changed dust regulations collection. for dust collection, yeah, yeah. for concrete, for silica, stuff like that, you know, looking into the health of, you know, your workers. So we regularly, and we specialize in dust con contamination and dust suction when it comes to both stone work over at the front product, but also concrete work here. But what I was going to tell you is one of the shifts that people don't realize in terms of the ownership cost of tools is when you come to having what are considered these brushless tools. So, you know, they'll be labeled brushless. Okay, so yeah, brushless here, brushless here. Most of them are brushless. None of them are coming yeah. brushless. Brushless tools are near non-serviceable. Really? The moment they go bad, you usually have to junk them. Because on these tools, when you open it up, yeah. the switch is going to be con connected to a PCB board, a little com computer board, which connects to the battery terminal, yeah. which then con con connects to the enclosed brushless motor. So what used to be on a non-brushless tool, battery terminal, switch, the, the, the magnetic field, the armature, you know, what could be up towards of four to six separate parts. If one part breaks, I can switch out. Now on this tool, any one of those half dozen parts break, 
that whole assembly has to switch out. And that whole assembly yes. costs usually as much as the whole tool. One of the things you might see that I don't sell a lot of is Milwaukee cordless. Really? Because they advertise a five-year warranty, mm -hmm. you know, but as a Milwaukee service center, sometimes we run into a lot of problems with that. But one of the things that we ran into with a lot of their tools were the, the serviceability of it, you know, the cost to repair. Like I said, we do, we do the service side also. So we have to be familiar with the ins and outs and the fine print of what a company will say. They, they can advertise a three-year warranty, a five-year warranty, or seven-year warranty, but if you're not gonna stand behind it or you can't truly warranty it, then you run into problems. So in a, a situation like this with the DeWalt, they advertise a one year full service. Mm -hmm. So any problem the first year, we can fix it. Mm -hmm. And they do a three year limited. Well, the three year limited, what that falls into would be basically the motor. Nothing else is included. Well, what's good with an XR tool is for years two and three, if anything in this assembly breaks, I can still warranty it because it's it's still connected to the motor. Ah, so I'll okay. always say the motor's bad, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When it came to Milwaukee tools, they're a little bit more difficult to do warranties with. So if I sell a $400 drill impact combo kit, and then after the first year, something were to go bad, I have a customer come back to me and say, oh, it's too costly to repair. You know, and they're like, what do you mean? I just bought this $400 kit from you a year ago. Why can't you repair it? And I have to explain to them, well, the cost of the repair, and the, I show them the, the diagram, and I let them know. And they say, well, it's under a five-year warranty. And I said, yes, but if I process this under the five-year warranty, it's not going to go through. You know, like, it, it gets, it? yeah, well. So what does, is covered by the five-year warranty then? With Milwaukee this past year, things have changed a lot. After the COVID issues, getting parts availability across the board was real difficult. Yeah. But, you know, we, we make it work. With Milwaukee, we couldn't get any parts. It's, we, I have tools here from earlier part of the year that I just can't get fixed. And these are warranty tools, less than a year old, you know, and they're sitting on my shelf for months at a time because I can't get parts. And so that affects me in that, you know, I can take a look at it, I can order parts, but if I can't get the tool out, mm. you know, it's, it, it, it causes problems. The factory service center owned by Milwaukee, I think they've actually resorted to replacing tools. Actually, just can't get a part, I'll give you a new one. Mm -hmm. I don't have that ability. I can request a re trade out, but, I have to go through a guy and he's not the easiest to work with. And so and that's the thing is, is on paper, you can say, well, this is the warranty or these are the rules. But until you deal with the National Service Center or actually deal with it, it's sad to say, depending upon where you live, who your service center is, the quality of service can vary, you know? And for us, we just had a lot of trouble being able to back and support Milwaukee in a way that I would feel comfortable with, just like all my other brands. Okay. So we phased out selling Milwaukee only because I don't want to be responsible for selling someone $100 worth of tools and then not being able to service them in a way that I would feel comfortable with all my other brands. Mm -hmm. And so in doing so, we've just kind of only pick and choose certain Milwaukee tools that we really need to sell. You know, even the, And the problem is, is they're a multi-billion dollar company, have such great branding at Home Depot stores now yeah. that people think Milwaukee is the best tool out there. They have incredible line of tools. But for me, it's like, you know, they're a volume business now. They're they're selling by volume. They're trying. They're 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 doing a scatter shot of every single specialty tool they can think of, and they're just pushing them out with no parts availability, no serviceability of it. So, as an independent service center, I get kind of put in a weird position to try to sell a product. But then, if I didn't have to service it, I say, oh yeah, it's broken. Go to the service center. But customers know for every single product that I have that they want to come back to me. Yeah. And with Milwaukee, my hands are a bit more tied than the other brands. What, so, what, what do you think of all overall quality? So they make take. really good tools. They make really good battery technology. Uh, Shervon, who just came out the, with the new Flex line, I can show you that one. This was, uh, so Shervon was a manufacturer of tools for a lot of other companies. They, uh -huh. they, they private branded their lines and they wanted to move away from that and put out their own line of tools. So they actually bought the Skill brand from Bosch. Mm -hmm. So they now own Skill. Mm -hmm. They own the Flex brand, which is another German company. They, uh, yeah, originally, Flex is a German company, yeah. which was acquired by a Chinese company. This was Sherwin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. so and, then uh, and they rebranded it. They used to have that maroon, uh, or, uh, reddish color line yeah, of tools. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're well known for angle grinders and like polishing polishers. And polishers. Yes. So that's what I was an original Flex dealer and uh, service center. 
for their stone working tools, for their mm -hmm. polishers, the edge, what are called edge milling machines that do uh, routing on the edge of stone. They were a real specialty tooler, but Shervon ended up buying them out and created this new line. The 24 volt. Uh, the, the, yeah. And in America, this line is being exclusively sold by Lowe's initially. Yeah. We were one of the first independent dealers to be brought on in this region specifically because we do sales and service. Okay, then we get into business because my viewers asked me to bring a 24 volt, 24 oh. volt flex uh, cordless <laughs> drill to test it because they are not available in Europe. Oh, they haven't, and okay. I was told to go to Lowe's. It would be only me in this region, Empire Tools and Lowe's. Yeah. We, uh, we are, as of right now, the, the, uh, one of the few exclusive independent distributors. It reminds me, is it like Makita or Milwaukee, like with a handle? Yeah, this, ha this original handle set was uh, popularized by Makita yeah. when they went to their high torque line of drills. Oh, right here, like this yeah, type, yeah. this high torque line. Yeah. And because the, the amount of torque that they're starting to generate now was getting so high. But yeah, their, their battery technology is good. Their charger technology looks really good. Literally, we just set up display just recently. Um, they're coming with a lot of specialty tools, full size seven and a quarter, mud mixing drills. Uh, yeah. Uh, Radio. Uh, jigsaw. Mm -hmm. Oh, correlated screw and uh, correlated screw gun with a drywall cutout tool for drywall working guys. They're they're coming out with a lot of cool stuff and they're backing their line with the limited lifetime warranty in terms of if you're to buy it because they just launched. So people who buy into it in the first year basically get grandfathered into lifetime service moving forward. You'll be in Europe, so I don't know how much you know, service you'll be able to get, but that's one of the things they're really trying to push this line out. And there's been a lot of YouTube videos comparing this to like Milwaukee or saying what's better, what's worse. Mm -hmm. And some videos say this is better, some videos say, I mean, I don't put them head to head, I don't test them. Well, you're talking to the biggest interviewer in Germany for tools, right? <laughs> yeah. We have a talk testing bench. Oh, okay. That, that, that uh, cost me 20,000 K, uh, 20, 20 K, not 20,000 K, that would be a little bit much. That'd be a little bit. Uh, and so we, I can really test the actual talk. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, I recently, like two weeks ago, I had a video where we put all the biggest cordless drills mm -hmm. in, 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 in a battle. And um, you know the new Bosch 150 C, mm -hmm. the new cordless drill, that was the best and the strongest, the most powerful oh, wow. drill of any time in the mm. 18 volt segment. But it, it surpassed the uh, Hikoki 36 volt. It surpassed the Makita 40 volts. Now, we just got the Makita yeah. 40 volts in. Yeah, the Makita 40 volts is actually disappointing. It's just a little more uh, powerful than the uh, 481. Oh, wow. So it's not mm -hmm. yeah, that's the keeping thing. up the promise. And that's something we talk about who makes the best of certain, you know, type of lines. That's the thing is even across certain SKUs, some will do better, some will do less. And that's the problem is it's hard to give a definitive across the board, you know, like who's the best, you know. But like Makita, Makita is uh, still very popular in Germany mm -hmm. and it's benefiting from, uh, from the image that Makita has, like mm -hmm. a very well-known power tool brand. Mm -hmm. But my viewers tell me, uh, that like, and I tell them <laughs> that I think that the battery technology from Makita is way behind because like all the others come up with the new battery technology like they Milwaukee, Bosch. They haven't touched that in a long time. Yeah, it, they were they were actually one of the first to market um, when they switched to lithium ion. Both Milwaukee and Dewalt had some hiccups. Mm -hmm. Dewalt actually got sued because they used someone else's proprietary lithium technology that was told someone else owned them, but it was it was a whole thing. So they rolled it out, uh, they ended up getting a lawsuit and they ended up having to relaunch a lot of their lines. And so in the mistakes that both Milwaukee and, and, and DeWalt made, Makita came first, one of the first to market with the lithium ion technology line and they've been pushing it ever since, but you're right, they've never updated their technology of the batteries up until this 40 volt line. Um, they make a really good name for us, we do really, really well in Makita and the grinders because yeah. their name is synonymous with the stone tool industry in, in Houston specifically. Yeah. Okay. So if you're ever on a job site and there's some masonry work being done, granite work being done, someone's going to have a Makita. It, it's just one and the same. Everyone, everyone buys Makita grinders. It's, it's the most popular. And so, so since we do so much diamond accessory sales of polishing and cutting, 
everyone generally buys the Makita grow. That's, that's for us is our, is our big thing. People actually come from out of town, sometimes out of state to this area specifically to buy stone. They'll swing by here to buy their accessories and they go back to wherever they come from. So if you are a service guy as well, mm -hmm. uh, like what is your experience in terms of like durability, like from the, with a the switch from non-brushless to brushless? Are they more robust or so, same, same? So, well, in terms of serviceability with the brushless tools, once they go out of warranty, we generally don't even look at them because it's, it's, the cost of repair is already so high out the, out, you know, out the gate. Um, overall, though, it's a bit easier to work on brushless tools because you're just changing out such large module sections mm -hmm, of it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the last two years have been real difficult in just getting parts availability. As an independent repair center, we get squeezed between the dealer, between the manufacturer and the customer, the end user. Because people will make bad reviews or something or say something bad because they, hey, why can't you get this tool turned around? It's like, but if parts are not available, they're just not available. Yeah, well, basically, the reliability of a brushless in, in comparison to a so, non-brushless, so is that there would a difference? Be, that would be more in terms of the efficiency of use with the battery technology. Um, but in terms of overall longevity of life, brushless is still new enough that I can't say that they last exceptionally longer, but the idea is that they're supposed to be more proficient in use of power, you know, uh, more power output to the power that they drain from the batteries and stuff like that. But for us, you know, I haven't seen anything in, in terms of an extra durability of the tool. That Because they claim that brushless is more durable mm -hmm. and... I know that they say they're supposed to be more durable, but I just know that when it comes to serviceability of it, It's there. Once they go bad, it's you usually have to throw them away. Okay. And, mo and most people don't realize that, you know, especially on tools under two hundred dollars. You know, uh, you know, once you go into more expensive tools, you might have some wiggle room in terms of you know what to repair. But most drills, impacts, circular saws, reciprocating saws, once that motor switch uh, module goes out, they can, they really can't be serviced. You know, and. That, that surprises a lot of people. I saw a sign, um, a Metabo uh, sign out there. So we we sell some Metabo hammers, and we've carried, we brought on some of their angle grinders. Yeah. But uh, Metabo now has their own line, but then they bought Hitachi and they rebranded Metabo HT. HPT, HPT, yeah. Yeah, so we still do the Metabo na HPT nail guns, which are the old Hitachi ones, and we do a handful of grinders, but we don't carry a full line of Metabo. Okay. They have name recognition but not as a one of the big boys you know so like in terms of name recognition how would you rate like first the first milwaukee, top three milwaukee uh dewalt are definitely at the top uh bosch makita would be kind of trailing after that and i would put i would put uh Vitavo, flex and those you know are the further you have to really know your tools to know a flex tool or know a Metabo tool or something like that. It just used to be the top of the top. Yeah, I, I, re to I did some research yesterday on Delta. The, the Wikipedia article said that um, uh, Porter Cable and uh, Delta ceased the production in the US, went to China, yeah. and then the quality went down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. went yeah. down. And then the original owners who had sold Delta to Stanley Stanley. Black and Decker, they bought the name back from ch the Chinese company and they wanted to bring the Unisol production back to America while still sourcing the lesser components overseas. And they were trying to do that for the last few years. As a sales service center, our issue with them, the, with the writing on the wall, was trying to get paid for our service work. So if I do a repair work under warranty, I submit the paperwork, they're supposed to pay me. I had to chase after that money, which is not common. So it's like, well, why is it more difficult? Like, why can't y'all just pay me? And they made me jump through a lot of hoops which was the first red flag. And then we said, well, at that point, let's, we're not gonna do warranty work anymore. If we're gonna have to chase after the money, we'll just, we're Doesn't not gonna make do that. Sense. So we stopped doing the warranty work, still sold some of the product. It just came out recently that they are no longer gonna distribute the products themselves. They are going through a master distributor. And the master distributor is Acme Tools, which, uh -huh. which is based in the North. They're a, a retail store. They're an online retailer, but they're large enough, and they, I guess they have the logistics ability to now, I guess they're gonna house all the DeWalt stock, and then they're gonna ship it out. I don't even know what the price structure is gonna be. Well, if you buy through a master distributor, you don't have to pay a certain markup for it from cost, 
But at that point, it's like, man, I can't get paid for warranty work. Now you want me to go put my orders through a competitor and have them ship. Like at that point, it's like, you're done. You're out. Yeah. So yeah. Delta is out. <laughs> so we're not. We're so whatever I have in Delta, I'm gonna get rid of, and we're not gonna come. We're not doing business with them. So when it comes to like hand tools, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of hand tools you carry here? Uh, we do a lot of Klein for electricians, uh, HVAC stuff. We carry like can we Can we go to a lot? Like, oh, um, yeah. So when people talk about uh, generic naming, like a Kleenex for tissue paper, yeah. channel locks in America are for these pump pliers. These are synonymous in America. So people people will use channel lock uh, in the same name as these tongue and groove type pliers. American made company been around forever. It's, it, it's, it's made in the US. Yes. Everything's made in the US with channel cool. lock. And so this is a brand uh, we've carried for a long, long, long time. And our channel lock salesman was actually, when he first started as a channel lock salesman, he opened up my dad as one of the earliest accounts like in 1980. So we've been selling channel lock for you know close to 40 years now. Uh, really great line of products. So that's a price point. It's a 58 bucks for this plus yeah. tax. Yes. Plus What's the sales tax in, in, in Texas? In Texas is 8.25 percent. Also um, kommt immer noch uh, 8,5 percent Mehrwertsteuer drauf oder Umsatzsteuer. These are some nice ratchets. Yeah. What is this? Oh, this is just this is actually just an import three-quarter drive ratchet. Uh, this are Crescent. I know the uh, the name. Oh no, no, this is no, no. I can mention my dad got one. Yeah, Crescent, uh, made by Apex. Uh, no, these are actually we just got these in. Uh, yeah, no, these are good, good quality ones. Three hundred bucks on there. Yeah. Our, we have other name brands up behind the counter. So this is our automotive section. We're actually waiting for an order to come in. It's stuck in a dock right now. Okay. But, but Lyle is a big American company that sells a lot of specialty automotive tools. Uh -huh. That's over here. Um, I can show you another section. When I was, when I visited Germany in the late 90s, a lot, of, a lot of us were listening to the German hip hop at that time, like the Fantastische Fear. Ah, the Fantastische Fear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually looked up, it was, it's such a stupid song, but it popped in my head out of the blue. Sexy Eyes. Yeah. You remember that song? It's, you yeah. know that song? Yeah. It's, uh, Sexy uh, Eyes uh, with Yeah. <laughs> Banana. <laughs> It was, a, it was a deer's large. I forgot the guy's name, but I don't know where it was. But it was a banana. Doctor. It, like, it yeah. just popped. I went in like 1998. So yeah, like, yeah. It, it was just, a, it was a cover from Doctor Hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. yeah. So he, Sexy yeah, he, eyes, mezzana, banana, blah 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 blah. It was a hip hop style. Yeah, so yeah. It was so, a one hit wonder. Exactly. I was there for the summer when it hit, and so that that song was stuck in my mind as an earworm. And then one day it just popped up. So I googled it on YouTube, and I saw the video. And it like it took me back 20 years. I couldn't believe yeah. it. I couldn't believe it. But yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that y'all knew what that was. So these are our rigid tools. So rigid was a line originally made by a company called Emerson. So they were plumbing tools, pipe threading, uh, uh, pliers like this. And then what happened was TTI, who owns Milwaukee, yeah. they bought the rights to the rigid name uh -huh. to then launch well, the, power the rigid tools. power tool yeah, line. Yeah. So people think it's the one in the same company, but they're not. It's a licensed name, sold, bought, manufactured by TTI, sold through Home Depot. Mm -hmm. And so people get the names really confused. Rigid, in terms of the hand tool line, top of the line. They're, yeah. they're great. You know, made in the US. Made in the US. And what TTI did was they took that name, which is so strong in America, and then they created a whole new line around it, launched in 2003, so almost 20 years now. And they've pushed that product out. But yeah, this is the original product line. You know, aluminum to save That's weight. It's aluminum, yeah. Yes. They, yeah. Didn't realize it. Yeah, steel and aluminum. Yeah, cost. Cost more, but the, the weight is significant. And the stability? The just, just as good. Yeah. So this aluminum too, probably. Yes. Wow. <laughs> the center of gravity is really this because this is the, not aluminum. Exactly. Yeah? Wow. From Germany or from Europe that watch the video, if they come to the US, they have to go to your shop. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's... It's a it's, lot of specialty stuff that yeah, you're not yeah, going to find anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. So Tajima is a big line. Actual oh, Tajima, we recommend Japan. it. It's from Japan. Yes. And they really made the best cutters. They make, yeah, so we actually, we used to have this on the floor mixed in with everything else, mm -hmm. but 
the, between their chalk lines and their blades and their knives, people really, really liked them. So I called them up and I was like, hey man, I'm willing to give you some space. Do you have a merchandise display? And they're like, perfect, we just launched a program. Yeah. So I moved a lot of my Tajima from different areas and I made a little end caps thing because people really, really like these products. Yeah. They really, like, really stand out. I like out. this. This is a nice little detail, mm -hmm. but it really adds up to this. Because like you can like make like if you have a oh. paint paint can, you have this like little tool that you need for here and there to fill around a little. Nice, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> but yeah, this this display we set up this past year and it's done really well for us. People love the Tajima line and it's getting better name recognition in America. It's not a household name, but in terms of professionals, when they see this display, they immediately know what it is. It's it's a real quality product. In terms of tape measure, what is the best brand in your opinion? Like I see a lot of Stanley tape measures. Stanley is popular in that um, the Stanley and Stanley Fat, uh, Fat Max name is just because they've been out forever. Like it's 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 the synonymous. I think it's fa the standard. I think Fat Max is a cool brand. Yeah, it's, isn't it? It is, and it's a really good name. Um, Tajima tape measures aren't as popular as their other other product segments. They make good tapes, but they're not as popular. Mm -hmm. For us, we sell a lot of this other company, Come Along. They've become very popular over the years, a very good product at a very good price point. And specifically, we sell a lot of, this, for us, a stainless steel tape measure, because a lot of these guys, these stainless steel tape measures, because mm -hmm. a lot of our large product, our guys are in waterproofing, natural stone use, and these tapes get wet and, mm -hmm. and, and start, you know. So you don't have any no. corrosion problem. Exactly, so wow. those have become very popular for us. Um, but also, Klein. The Klein product line, manufactured for electricians, HVAC, but they have one of the best warranties in the country. And I have, I, I have a Klein display on this side and behind there I can show you. But pretty much, if anything would ever go wrong with a Klein product, you just bring it back to me, I'll switch it off for you. You know what Klein means? Mm -mm. It's a German word. It means like small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the opposite from the fat max <laughs> and the Klein. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they're really good tools. They're hand tools and their tape measures. It's it's a near no questions asked. You know, if there's a problem, they're gonna stand behind the product. And if I take a product from a customer, they will never leave me hanging. They'll say, hey, you took it back from a customer, we made it right, we'll make it right with you. Mm -hmm. So I can anything I sell from Klein, I have complete uh, assurances and if anything bad were to happen, I can make my customer happy. I think th this is the best strategy because like it's like Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you want to uh, um, send something back to Amazon because you have a problem, mm -hmm. they refund you. Yeah. No question to ask. Yeah. These are my router bits, wow. shaper cutters. <laughs> we sell Amana. Amana is our main line out of Israel. We sell CNC machines. Uh, we sell a lot of router bits. Wow. Yeah. So these are Wood. These are worth, huh? Like 105, 145. So this is real pro, professional. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, sets in here. Uh, like when it comes to routers, mm -hmm. I see like uh, router bits from different companies mm -hmm. on the internet that look like, that are like painted like nicely, like. So this is considered carbide tooling because of the cutting edge. Yeah. So there's only so many carbide manufacturers out there. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying from Amana, you're buying from Freud Diablo, you're buying from CMT, you're buying quality product that they've most likely manufactured. Those other funny brands that have the yellow paint yeah, thing, yeah. Like, who knows where they're getting the source from. And the quality of the carbide, it may cut once, it may cut twice, but how long will the cutting edge hold that sharpness? And that's what comes into play. Those CMTs, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. it's the best you can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Very high quality. And they are painted, but that's yeah. about as, that, we, that router table you opened there, yeah, yeah. every one of them. So that, that is CMT. CMT, yeah. yeah. CMT, they're yeah, a very they, good line. They make saw blades too, they don't just make router bits. So. Yeah, so yeah, most of these companies do deal in carbide, okay. they'll do saw blades, they'll do router bits, because it's the same, you know, uh, cutting edge. So we sell a full line of circular saw blades up to 20 inch. Uh, by Amana, we sell a full line of router bits. We sell full, we sell shaper cutters for the larger side profiles. That's the same here in these two display cases. Uh, we do a lot. Wow, I can't think of a similar sh store like yours in Germany. 
it's in America. There even in America, there's only a handful of stores that yeah. are as large as we are. This is Viha. This is a German brand. Yeah, Viha uh, sounds like Yiha. <laughs> <laughs> So Weha has been another brand that we've carried for a long time. Uh, like Klein, they stand behind their tools. So if there's ever an issue, Weha will work with me to make things right with a customer. Vera has become very popular. Vera? Yeah. Over that's the that's years. what I yeah. brought yeah. along. Yeah. yeah. So Vera has become very popular, but for us, we're a Weha house. There's a lot of overlap between the two brands. Yeah, yeah. So Weha was with us originally, so we're, we're sticking with Weha, so we stay with them. And if you're an electrician in this city or in the United States, you, you work with Klein Tools. Yeah, so then Klein. So Klein Tools is made in the US or yes. is it? Made in the US, so I have all the screwdrivers here, and then I have all the pliers and replier pliers behind the counter. Now, people originally use these screwdrivers as pry bars, as chisels. <laughs> and, they misuse them. And they misuse them. I would still warranty them for that. I would still warranty them for my customers, but last few years they came out with a demolition driver, yeah. where it's a screwdriver, the tang goes all the way to the end, and they yeah. put a metal cap on it. Yeah. So this one is actually made to abuse. You can hit it with a hammer, you can try to pry with it. This would ever crack or break on you, I can switch it out a new one. But this is also very popular for us. So I see this uh, Ryobi that you got in for service, but these are some nail guns. So yeah. probably this is not a DIY user that brought them. Because like in Germany, I see like pro users on job sites using yes. Ryobi because they just went into this situation where they just needed a nail gun or, or a hammer, available. so they went to a DIY store, mm -hmm. got on Ryobi, and then they stick to it. So we do have a market segment that are professional tradesmen that use Ryobi, but their tools are always in the shop. So they have multiple sets, and they're always, okay. even though they may be cheaper on the front end, they, you'll usually have to have multiple tools because they're always... Okay, so it's not marketing blah 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 that Milwaukee surpasses Ryobi in terms of quality and durability. It's, it is a fact. It, yeah, so Milwaukee is a better grade of tool overall than Rigid, which is a better grade of tool overall than Ryobi. A, a Ryobi would not be comparable to a Milwaukee. You know the, you know the history be, uh, behind TDI? Because uh, TDI was founded by a German guy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he went to Shanghai. To, to China and um, he started as a like just a distributor and like to as an importer for cheap Chinese electric tools mm -hmm. and then he finally figured out that he acquired the rights to Ryobi to the Ryobi brand name then he uh, acquired uh, Milwaukee mm -hmm. and uh, Rigid mm -hmm. or AEG in Germany yeah. and uh, yeah but they have like um, uh, a joint venture with a Chinese uh, um, founder or a Chinese uh, stakeholder mm -hmm. because to you make a business to, yeah. in China, you have to have a Chinese Yeah, you have, to, you, have to, you have to partner with the Chinese people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he became one of the richest guys Oh, yeah, they're billion. The amount of volume of business that they do. When you say uh, you take a Milwaukee drill compared to a Ryobi drill, for sure, there's a, there's a difference in quality. But then what you look into is all the specialty tools that Milwaukee is making. Yeah. These, like, they make these little like ratcheting uh, pipe cutters. That's not going to be that different than a Ryobi tool. They're basically rebranding some of these, like, you know, off the shelf, not the greatest tools, and they're putting them under the Milwaukee names. When you talk about core Milwaukee tools, they're, they're really good quality. But when you find these real specialty, one off type items, those are going to be real hit and miss. You got to be careful on those. Just because they say they're Milwaukee doesn't mean they're going to be of great quality. What about those? So, one of the things you were talking about uh, in terms of being able to stand behind a product. We sell a lot of like metal working type stuff, drill bits, carbide, drill, carbide burrs, metal hole saws. There's a lot of companies that make stuff like this that, and they private label for other companies. And one of the things about these type of products is that if you're not gonna stand behind the product, you have a million competitors out there that I can, that will stand behind the product. Mm -hmm. So I just had some issues with some of these, you know, I had a, a drill code bit break and I, I tried to get a warranty on it. And the lady that worked customer service, I could tell was new because she was like, oh, well, you know, if there's a problem, she was trying to run me through the hoops. And I said, no, 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 like just have my salesman call me. And sure, my salesman called me and said, what can I do for you? And I said, oh, this bit broke. Let your customer service lady know you don't lose my thousand dollar account for a yeah. $10 bit. And the guy, yeah. FedEx the bit to me the very next day yeah, yeah. and had to let the lady know like, hey, I know what 
it says on paper in terms of how you're supposed to deal with you know, return issues or stuff like that, but there's a level of reading between the lines to know, hey, if you look at this customer that's been a customer of ours for 20 years or 10 years and they want to warranty one item, do it. Don't, don't make it difficult because I can easily jump from this ship to a half a dozen different manufacturers that, can, that would be willing to take their spot in it. When it comes to metal working, metal drilling, this is always something that's up in the air. There's companies like Alpha, Drill Code, Norseman, Eagle Tech. There's tons of American companies that manufacture these things and it's such a cutthroat industry. If you're not gonna provide good service to your distributors, then Out. just, just yeah. go to someone else, you know? What are these giant so, scissors over there? Yeah, if you wanna come back behind the counter, it, it might be a little bit messy on the ground. So these are the Klein strippers, cutters, rebar pliers, end cutters, flush cutters, everything lifetime guarantee. Any problem, mm -hmm. uh, crack, Is it really break. lifetime warranty? When I say lifetime warranty, a lot of things, I may have to put an asterisk or some sort of yeah, stipulation yeah, yeah. for the life of this business. Klein has never left me hanging uh -huh. on anything. And, cool. it, and even if it's a customer abuse situation where I shouldn't do it, if the customer is good enough, like let's say they were to use one of these and cut a live wire, uh -huh. and, the, and a whole you chunk a, of the, yeah, yeah comes yeah. out, that's supposed to be immediate, no warranty. Yeah. But if the customer's really good, he made a mistake, I want to keep that business, if I take it, yeah. the client will not deny me that warranty. Yeah, think, think in business in the long run. Exactly, yeah. and so that's why when it, when, when People talk lifetime, this is truly lifetime. Um, when people talk about lifetime warranty from Rigid at Home Depot, if you register and warranty the tool, it is truly lifetime. Even though I don't sell Rigid, I'm a service center. So I do all the paperwork, I do all the processing. Mm -hmm. I Oh, uh, <laughs> I'll show you something funny. Uh, hold on, let me grab this right here. People talk about lifetime warranty. Uh, so this, this are, oh, repair these are tools. for service? Uh, okay. uh, ready yeah. to be picked up. Okay. Wow. This one, check this out. Manufactured in 2003. This is one of the original rigid tools that were released under lifetime warranty that did not have to be registered. These all, were already released under TTI? Yes, this yeah. is under TTI. This is the, when they first came out. This came out the second half of 2003. So this customer bought it the Christmas season in 2003. He still has his receipt and he wants warranty service on this tool. Something, something like this. Oh, this okay. drill motor is no longer available. Uh -huh. So I just processed the warranty. Once it goes through, they're going to mail him a whole new kit. Wow. A whole new kit with a new drill. New battery, new drill. Because they don't manufacture this anymore. But they, they, so they, I can't they still fix have it. them in stock? No, 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 no. He bought this in 2003. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's used it for near 20 years. But he's getting a new drill of the current line. Of the current line. Wow. Because he saved the receipt since 2003. See, nowadays you have to register it, and if you register it, it's the same process. If, if a part for a current tool is no longer available, they'll replace it. But this guy was grandfathered in. So he's used this for, what, 18 years, 17 years. Now that parts no longer available, he gets a whole new kit. Wow. So it, it is true lifetime. You know, you just have to follow the rules. But this, this literally just came in the other day. I have employees that are younger than this tool. Wow. <laughs> but like I said, he saved the receipt. So, you know, he gets a, he gets a whole new kit. This little stash I have back here, these are all batteries that yeah. are being, that, that I've processed paperwork mm -hmm. uh, and I'm waiting for the approval to give them the new one. These are all replacements. These are all tools because of COVID lockdown, parts issues. Mm. I can't get parts for these tools. So under warranty, all replacements. What battery is the most reliable in your experience? You've talked about how the Makita batteries haven't been upgraded. Yeah. But they're... They're reliable. They're reliable. Yeah. They may not be the newest technology, but they're reliable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the newer DeWalt stuff, reliable. Uh, rigid, not reliable. Those rigid batteries are real bad. Uh, rigid Ryobi batteries are real, real bad. I, we switch those out all the time. Yeah. In terms of snips, Malco is an HVAC line. They do a lot of duct work, a lot of uh, you know air conditioning type tools. So those are their cutters. Depending upon where you lived in America, you know, generally Democratic states locked everyone down. Republican states opened everything back up. 
So this company, Midwest Snips, yeah. they're based in Michigan. Uh huh. My best selling line of Snips. I could not get them for the last two years because they can't go to work. Oh. The, the governor in Michigan shut everything down. So Michigan Ladder Company is a company that's an American made ladder company that's been in America for over a hundred years, went out of business. Shit. Because they couldn't go to, they could not fulfill orders. They literally could not, they were not allowed to go to work. So a hundred year old business went down the drain. Midwest Snips almost went under because they could not go to work. They had the product, they could ship it out, they were not allowed to. Because no people in the warehouse. Be, yeah, because the governor of Michigan said they were not allowed to work. And so my biggest snip line, I'm down to just this. I only had one order coming in this entire year because there was a brief moment they lifted it, mm -hmm. they were able to ship it out and they locked it back down. Like, it's been crazy. And That's so, bad. hey, Hector, didn't you call Mich Midwest and the lady was crying, right? Yeah, she was crying because there was a chance that they did not know did not know what the future of the company was that they were actually uh on the verge of getting ready to be shut down but uh one of our other employees called recently and luckily the company is still up and running at this point we're just waiting to see what they're going to be able to do but literally there was a period of time when they didn't know if they would be able to keep the doors open and the people that we do orders with you know we're you know on a personal basis because we call regularly and we're keeping in touch with them the whole company was kind of up in the air because the governor there was on the most extreme end of the lockdowns. And so, and that's one of those things that we have to deal with. So customers regularly come in and look for this product and I say, oh, I don't have it. And they're like, no one has it. And I go, well, there's a reason why. They were literally not allowed to work for this last year, two years. So do you, do you know uh, the plier, the German plier brand Knipex? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I have a small Knipex to play under the clock if you wanna go oh. look at them. So we carry the what? Cobra pliers, the alligator pliers. Because they are made in Germany, yes. and this is the most renowned uh, plier company They just came out with some new pliers that can tip on the end. They're like needle nose pliers, yeah. but you don't have to come from the side, you yeah. can come from directly on the yeah. edge. Yeah. Yeah. They just came out, and they're back ordered till March of next year. Ah. In terms of the best snap ring pliers on the market, I love Nipex, Knipex uh, snap ring pliers. The, I don't know what it is they do in terms of these end pieces, yeah. but when you put in a snap ring, it fits snug and it's secure. There's no wobble to it. And there's a significant level of difference in quality when you use one of these snap ring pliers yeah. versus anyone else. Yeah, I, I love these. Yes. Because like it's like for metric, for inch. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the, the price, it's 62. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a markup because probably it's a it's an import. Yes, but it, I think, in my opinion, it's worth it. And they have like for electricians, they have like a multi tool for electricians, mm -hmm. a multiplier that you can crimp, and you can cut, and you have like a, a oh, it's it's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, we people yeah, we've, love it. We've carried Knipex for about 15, 20 years, and. You know, they've always been popular. And they have uh, like, they have a new one, a new version that is uh, automatic adjusting. So oh, you, you would... don't, so don't, you don't need the, the knob, mm -hmm. you just, you just use it. Oh, it adjusts wow. itself. It has a, like a kinematic here in between. You would think that a plier is a plier. Oh yeah, yeah And yeah. it's, the invention is, there's no more Oh progress. no, there's always, there's always they, some level they, of innovation they, they, they come up with some ingenuity. Yeah. When so it comes, this is air pressure? Yeah, wow. air, air tools. Uh, Chicago Pneumatic is our main line. Uh, is air tools um, popular in the US? For mechanics. Okay. Generally still for mechanics because guys that work on like 18 wheelers and big tools that would need big three quarter or one inch impacts, those are still primarily air tools. Have you seen the new Milwaukee inch uh, impact drivers? Yeah, I've seen the big ones. but The cordless? Yeah, but I have, we haven't brought any of those on yet. They are of, huge. Because you know, the battery packs are really big, but the cost of loadout is so high. But mm. most of the guys, they already have a 60 gallon air compressor. They already have lines put out. So, if, you know, you're, that market is more for like a mobile mechanic or someone who has to move, you know, moving around. If, they're, if they actually have a, you know, a shop, they're gonna stick with air tools. Uh, the cost of ownership is much lower. The cost of uh, upkeep is much lower. As long as you put the right uh, dryers and oilers in your lines, air tools last forever. Um, 
trying to think what other special things. Oh, we sell buns, sockets, uh, specialized sockets and wrenches. Oh, if you want to look at wrenches and hand tools, I got a bunch over here. That's Gorilla Glue. I like Gorilla Glue, but you can't get it anymore in Germany. Uh, so one of the things that people really come to us for are sockets. There's sockets everywhere. One inch drive, deep, 12 points, short, short 12 points, three quarter drives, you know, we got a lot of specialty tools. So a lot of automotive guys come to us because, I mean, if you need a deep 75 millimeter one inch socket, uh -huh. they're not gonna have this at a regular shop. No, you, know? <laughs> you don't get these at Walmart. So this lifetime warranty is pretty popular in the US, I guess. Yes, to be able to sell something to stand behind it, uh, when people are buying something of quality, that you need to be able to stand behind that product. But yeah, this wow. is a two and nine sixteenths combination wrench. Yeah, that's pretty. I can't imagine some of the stuff these guys have to work on. I did videos for uh, Caterpillar trucks oh, and wow. dozers, like the biggest ones, mm -hmm. working in the coal industry, in the mines. Yeah. Yeah, probably they are the ones that do that. Yeah. <laughs> so <I'm only> <laughs> that is bizarre. <laughs> That's something. Yeah. <laughs> Comes in very handy. Yeah. This is one of those things, if you need it, you need it. We have a motto that we say on our videos from time to time, that is, uh, haben ist besser als brauchen. Better that, to have than to look? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, 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 say, I, I also remember a little yeah. bit. That's my motto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, we had an Instagram session yesterday where uh, I asked my viewers, my community, if they have any questions to Doug. And uh, they said he should say haben ist besser als brauchen in German. <laughs> he had a hard time. <laughs> How is it that this guy didn't have any other hits? <laughs> Come on. This guy's the best! So sexy eyes is playing with words because like eyes, yeah, the ice German, cream, ice and cream, the sexy yeah. eyes, yes. I would say like the lyrics, you would call it explicit lyrics <laughs> because like like parade. I don't see. I don't. I never even bothered to try to translate. I just remember hearing this song. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! What um, song of the Fantastic Four you liked? It, it was it was a, it was an album uh, with the uh, it looks like an airline uh, airline manual. It, that's all I remembered. It, it, it was it, uh, my friend had the actual album, so we just put the whole album on and would play it. But and and how, how does it sound to you like when uh, when you hear like German rap? Oh, I liked it. You know. Yeah, I, yeah but, but how is how it sounds? Because like I remember like I think. A lot of the Rammstein success is mm -hmm. because like it's